skill refresh and continuous learning so this is very important uh, Peter because since you've been away from the field for a while as you're explaining in your email it might be helpful to catch up on the latest softwares and techniques the AutoCAD software might have evolved since your last experience so spending some time to familiarize with the program with the new tools can be very beneficial also try to commit yourself with continuous learning you can start for instance joining our live streams that we do each Sunday to learn all of the new techniques and also keep you updated. Welcome back to another Lazy Show where we teach you AutoCAD in a way that it's more productive so you can stop wasting your time. Last week, when responding to an email from Peter, uh, I realized that the advice I had for him could benefit more people. However, I wasn't sure how to do that. So I asked Peter if I could respond with a video and he agreed. So here's the email. I'm also a CAD draftman and graduated in 2008. Worked for several years as a CAD technician for various companies in Texas. Structural engineering and fire protection. In 2017, my wife and I moved back to Puerto Rico, where we are originally from. For the past three months or so, I've been thinking about going back to work in CAD, but don't know where to start. I worked as a freelancer for a couple of years with a colleague of mine who started her own company in Texas and asked me to help her with CAD work, but had to change careers when I moved here. He means in Puerto Rico, right? I'm thinking of going back as a freelancer, but I know a lot has changed and not sure if there is room for another freelance CAD drafter. So I really appreciate your feedback and recommendations. So that was our friend Peter. And let's give him five tips or advices on how to succeed as a freelancer. Online presence. Yes. So Peter, what I'll recommend is also to establish a professional online presence. So this could be maybe a website like a LinkedIn profile, or it can be a presence on a freelance platform like maybe Upwork or Fiverr. There are many out there, but these platforms can really help you showcase your skills and not only that, but also to connect with potential clients. So additionally, you can create an updated portfolio, right, of your work. So this again will showcase your past work, including maybe samples from your years of experiences right, that you already have. All of this, what it does is it demonstrates your skills to potential clients. Now, building trust can also be achievable through an AutoCAD certification like the one that I obtained it's right there. So let me grab it really quick. So hopefully you guys can see. It. So I didn't initially need the certification because, you know, I was already working in the architecture field and you might feel the same way. However, this certification was important for me because it helped me gain trust from my audience, from my YouTube audience. Um, so now they know they are being taught by someone who knows their stuff. So what do you think guys about this advice or tip to succeed as a freelancer? Offer value. Yes. So this is very important because this kind of highlight what sets you apart from other cut drafters. And this could be your specialization or maybe unique skills or maybe unique experience in different sectors. For instance, in my case, as an AutoCAD professional or consultant, I could try to do everything. For instance, I could offer troubleshooting services and so on. But in the end, I won't have any specialization that people can uh, recognize me. So then I decided to kind of niche down 
and focus on AutoCAD optimization. So now people can recognize me as the person whose unique skills simplify AutoCAD tasks or processes, right? So that's how you will see now the Lazy Architecture. So what do you think guys? Do you think it's important to set uh, yourself apart from other drafters? Start small. Yes. So Peter, consider beginning with smaller projects or offering your services at a competitive rate. This is very important to build your reputation with a client base. So remember that relationships come first. Once you build these relationships or connections, then the work will follow. So talking about relationships, guys, do you think this is important to gain clients or you just do the job, get it done, send it and you're done. <laughs> I think this is one of the most important ones, guys. Networking and relationships. Yes. So Peter, try to reconnect with your colleagues from Texas and maybe other contacts in the industry. So they might have insights into potential freelancing opportunities. So remember that freelancing isn't just about the work that you do. It's also about building strong client relationships. Understanding your client's needs can go a long way. So for example, I found my current architecture job thanks to a connection that wasn't even a friend at that time. So I was in this long line doing some paper, per, paperwork for my passport and there was a person in front of me and then we started a conversation and I found out that this person's son was an architect. So when this person asked me, hey, what do you do? Well, I said, I'm an architecture student and he replied, awesome, I have a son that is an architect and works in an architecture firm. Uh, would you be interested in working in an architecture firm? He asked and I replied, yes. So immediately he was the connection right there. And thanks to this person that I met there for the first time, I got into my current job. Of course, I had to pass all of these interviews in order to gain the job. But if I never talked to this person that was in front of me, probably will never be in this um, current job right now. So right there you have an example of how important networking and building relationships is in this field of freelancing. Do you agree? Do you disagree? 